So anyway, here I is in the Southern Sierra foothills, and it, it, there's a rare plant here that has a really interesting ecology. Okay, what you got going on is basically oak uh, foothill woodland. Elevation's probably two or three thousand feet. You got granite boulders everywhere. It's no longer sedimentary like it was down there. Oh, there's a nice cow. Hello. And uh, basically you got these granite boulders, and you got Ribes cursatorum, uh, oak leaf gooseberry. And what's going on is you got rodents, a bunch of rodents and the rats and, and whatnot. The rats living in under, you know, under these uh, boulders and then in this these thickets of gooseberries. You can see there's another uh, same type of uh, community, a plant community habitat going on up there. And what happens basically is the rodents create these little scurry paths of bare soil. Uh, and those end up acting as the sole place that uh, a very rare species of plant, very rare and odd species of plant grows. Uh, we'll see if we can find some of those. Now real quick, uh, before I uh, move on, I want to show you these morteros. Basically, they're basically grinding stones left over from uh, the indigenous peoples, of course, that used to uh, reside here. And what they would use these for is basically for making acorn meal uh, from uh, acorns from those blue oaks up there. And it's Quercus douglasii. But uh, of course, it's just a, a shadow of its former habitat. All the invasive grasses uh, weren't here before, and there were probably uh, quite a bit more oak trees. And uh, um, overall, a much healthier ecosystem. Now it's all just devoted to uh, cattle and cow shit. So, anyways, uh, you know, we're uh, up here, okay, in the uh, beautiful uh, Southern Sierra foothills. And uh, right there, you can see they got the little scurry pass of the granite. And you got the Ribes cursatorum, and you got some Amsinkia, and then you just got a great abundance of this very rare annual Diplacus species, formerly Mimulus, Diplacus pictus. It's called the Calico monkey flower, and I think you know, I think the eyes kind of look like uh, what a Corollas kind of look like the eyes of a rat fink. You know that the uh, what was it? It was like that that crack smoking rat that drove the four wheeler. I don't know. Anyways, there's an abundance of the granite, which definitely creates an acidic substrate. And I've uh, last time I was at this spot, there weren't this many going off. There was only one or two. It wasn't a good rain year. They maxed out at about one or two inches. I seen one plant a couple miles up the road in the same type of a uh, ecological uh, community, and it was only it was only six or seven inches tall. Just one plant grown with a, a nicotiana, a nicotine species. But here you can see they're thriving. It's been a good rain year. This is an endangered plant. It's probably endangered due to uh, invasive grasses and a habitat degradation due to uh, cattle. And uh, again, it's got a very interesting ecology uh, with the rodents. The rodents, they need this. It needs the scurry path. And then, of course, the seeds. You can see how the, the leaves right there are somewhat uh, uh, like Velcro. They're covered in these little little hairs, these little sticky Velcro hairs. The seeds are the same way, and the seeds uh, will stick to the rodents. And uh, the rodents don't really eat them because I think they're uh, quite irritating uh, because of those hairs, but the hairs do help the seeds stick to the rodent legs. And then the rodents just, you know, go about doing their little rodent things, scurrying around and what the shit, and uh, they help disperse the seed. Now, the, the important question here, of course, to ask is, was this plant more widespread before uh, widespread livestock grazing and the, the spread of the invasive grasses, like this uh, brome or whatever the shit this is? I don't know, but this is the only spot, this is the only niche where it can get in and uh, eke out any kind of, uh, any kind of survival. Nice seem sinky, a big tall him sinky. And of course, there's the rodent holes, see? They make the little nice scurry paths. They make the scurry paths, they transport the seed. Real glandular, sticky, sticky and glandular. Nice bloodshot eyeballs. Then you look at the sides of the Corolla too. Look at this nice. 
Ain't that something? Look how beautiful that is. Got a nice calyx. Anyway, so that's that. What a fucking plant. Look at that. It's so, it's so goddamn glandular and hairy with them trichomes. You got the granite sand grain sticking to it. Look at it. And of course, when a plant is like that, it both it discourages herbivory. It can reduce uh, the impact of ultraviolet light. Okay, and then of course, when the seeds are like that too, which they are, it aids in dispersal. So the little rabbits and the fucking kangaroo rats and whatever the hell uh, aid in, in moving the seed around. Now, why it looks like a bloodshot crackhead, I don't know. But it is, it's quite a beautiful pattern viewed in this context, you know. Hey, Chorizo. Chorizo! Okay, I was gonna run you through. I was gonna run you through a quick breakdown in a world of Mimulus taxonomy. Mimulus is now a defunct genus. It used to be the genus of both this plant right here, okay, with the yellow flowers, and it used to be the genus of that plant, of course, the very rare Diplacus pictus, okay? And, and a couple years ago, there was a big shakeup in the taxonomic world, all right? There were hearts broken. There were people crying. There were dildos being thrown, burning dog shit bags being left on people's doorstep. All because everything that had a petiole, okay? See the petiole right there? See the red stem that the flower's on? That's the petiole. Attaches a flower to the stem. Everything that had a petiole went into the genus Erythrant, okay? And everything that had the more sessile flowers, that is flowers without a petiole, okay? Like these, see how the flowers just... They just stick right to the right to the stem, okay. Everything in that that clad went into the genus Diplacus. So Mimulus is no more. Now you got Erythrant Gutatus, and uh, and you got Diplacus Pictus, okay. And like a uh, Diplacus Orantiacus, etc. It's it's a uh, it's a big you know. It's for the better though, okay? It was a big shakeup, but it's for the better because what they do is they go in there, the taxonomists and the botanists, and they do molecular phylogenetics. They look at the DNA barcoding. They realize that this was not as closely related to this as, uh, as previously thought. They're still in the same, same family, okay? They still share a common ancestor, but they're not in the same genus. Overall, it makes a lot more sense, and it's, it's, it's for the better. It's to uh, help our understanding of, uh, of whatever's going on in terms of the evolution of this uh, clad, this wonderful clad of plants.